Long enough to cover the subject and short enough to keep it interesting. Welcome to Out Up My League. I'm Nick Diaz. I find Ed Ogeron to be the most inconceivable coach in all of American sports. Okay, I spent all day yesterday, and all of us did, making fun of Coach O for what he said at his press conference and being honest to a fault. Now, let me defend him, though. Let me defend Coach O, because it is inconceivable to me. He is, he is absolutely inconceivable. Think about it. It is inconceivable that someone who had the worst job performance in the history of the SEC over a three-year span at Ole Miss has now become this successful in his four years plus at LSU. I mean, let's take, so here's what I'd like to do. Let's take his worst year out of the equation. Let's take his worst year, and then let's take his best year out of the equation. So if you take out last year's team, which is his worst, if you just count 2016 through 2019, Ed Ogeron has more top 10 wins than any coach in college football. And if you take out 2019, his best year, Ed Ogeron has the second most top 10 wins since 2016, and that's not counting Stanford in 2013, when he was the interim coach at USC. I mean, th this guy, he won three conference games in three years at Ole Miss. I mean, this isn't freaking Vanderbilt. This is Ole Miss. I mean, I, it, he didn't even inherit... This, this is the thing. People compare him to Gene Chizik. Gene Chizik inherited the roster at Auburn. Ed Ogeron didn't inherit the 2019 roster. He built it all on himself. I mean, Joe Burrow, as great as he is, he's not a physical specimen cheat code like Cam Newton. The roster was built top to bottom with NFL guys that he constructed. And what's more inconceivable to me is that Ed Ogeron has qualities that most people in his profession don't have. Successful or, hell, even un unsuccessful. He has honesty and humility. He's willing to put his ego aside at the drop of the hat. You get shut out by Alabama. Oh, I guess I got to change the offense. All right, well, let's change the offense. Oh, uh, people say I'm too much of a control freak at Ole Miss. All right, well, I guess I got to delegate authority then. I mean, just without even thinking about it. What's what's even more remarkable is that this honesty and humility comes from a man who grew up where he grew up in a time that he grew up in. He grew up in the 70s, in the 60s and 70s, in a small town in the middle of nowhere in the South, in South Louisiana. He had never, he admitted that he had never been outside of Lafouche Parish and left Baton Rouge after two weeks. He left Baton Rouge after two weeks because he was homesick and he couldn't stand the bigger city. I looked this up. In the 1970s, Baton Rouge was less than 200,000 people. And he, he couldn't stand the big city. That's how sheltered he was. And you know how they talk about... I mean, think about this. How many grown men that you know that grew up in a small town all across America, like Lafouche, that are now at the age that they're at, 60 years old, and they start saying now, out of all the times in their life, they want to start saying, you know what, I need to start listening more. Need to change more. Let's uh, let me open up. Let me be more honest. Let me listen to people. A man who's made lots of money. A man even at even after he's had the greatest season in the history of college football, still is eager to change his ways just so quickly. I mean, we say this all the time in the NFL. You know there are billionaire owners. You know old senior citizens who are in their sixties, seventies, eighties. Who, who have made billions and billions of dollars even before they owned an NFL team. And if they're not good at their job, if they're too meddling, if they don't change with the times, well, guess what? Don't expect them to change anytime soon because they've got big egos. They've said, hell, I've done it this way for 60, 50 years, and I've made lots of money doing it, so why the hell should I listen to anybody but myself? Now, Ed Ozeron hasn't made billions of dollars, but he's made millions of dollars throughout his life, and he's still doing this. And how is that possible, especially in a profession of men? I mean, think, the men in, in the profession of coaching have such big egos, ha are so stubborn. Just take away the success and the money. I mean, they, they are just hard to get along with. They really are. 
And look, I know I made fun of Coach O yesterday because he was honest to a fault about admitting he didn't interview past coach, you know, past staff members and coaches. And look, maybe I still think he should have kept that within his inner circle. But let me ask you this. Is there such a thing as honesty to a fault? Well, of course there is. Too much of anything is bad for you, especially honesty. Okay, you say that. And look, that was my natural response to you can be honest to a fault. But let's really think about it. I mean, can you be honest to a fault? There are consequences for being too honest, but is it ever really bad? I mean, how, how much respect do you truly lose when you're that honest all the time, unapologetically? I mean, everybody makes fun of Ed Ogeron, and I do it too, for constantly seeking out advice from Pete Carroll, where everyone's like, well, he doesn't know who the starting quarterback's going to be. I bet he's just going to call Pete Carroll, and Pete Carroll will tell him. Well, he doesn't know who to hire. Well, I guess he'll just ask Pete Carroll, and Pete Carroll will tell him. And then yesterday, being brutally honest and admitting to doing something that most people would never admit to, especially in his profession, but it goes back to humility and honesty. I mean, we can make fun of Coach O all we want for seeking out advice from Pete Carroll and being so honest during press conferences, but is it really that bad of a thing? Why is it bad to be honest every time you make a mistake, even after you've been so successful? Maybe that's why he's the most inconceivable coach in sports history today. Maybe it's not so inconceivable. Thanks for listening to Out of My League. If you like what you heard, be sure to like, share, and subscribe, or follow me on Twitter and Facebook in the description link below.